Hey guys, I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC, and today we're going to take a look at the Phantom 2 and the Vision Plus controller. We're going to show you some basic features, and we're going to go into some more advanced features as well. But the whole time we're going to show you in plain English and show you exactly what the switches and the different modes do with your controller. So uh, sit back and enjoy. So right out of the box, brand new, your Phantom 2 remote control is going to come set up in Phantom mode in your assistant software. So this means that it's going to have some dumbed down controls. So the S2 switch on the left hand side won't be functional at this point. But later on when we put it into NASA M mode, which we can also show you, that will add more functionality and what's called IOC to the left hand side, which we'll go into later. So S1 switch will be used. Uh, as well as the left hand joystick and the right hand joystick and we'll go through some features now and we'll show you what they're all about okay before we get started on showing you some of the functions and the features of the switches we're going to let you know about the 5.8 gigahertz capability of this transmitter previous transmitters came in a lower frequency so that means we had a lower resolution which means that we had a, a, a little bit of lag between the radio and the aircraft so with this controller at 5.8 gigahertz, you're not going to see hardly any lag between the operation of your radio control sticks to your helicopter. So if you make a movement with either one of the sticks, you're going to see almost an immediate response. Now, out of the box from the factory, it comes FCC compliant, set up as a USA standard for radio operation frequency. If you turn on the transmitter, it's going to give you two beeps. When you hear two beeps, you know that you're in FCC compliancy for the United States mode. It's going to give you 100 milliwatts per hour, uh, excuse me, 100 milliwatts output power for that, as well as a 500 meter range for the US FCC compliancy. Now, if you want to switch this, if you're in Europe and you want to switch this over to CE compliancy, you can do that. If you switch it on in CE compliancy, you're going to hear a single beep. And when you hear a single beep, that means you're in that, that CE compliancy. So European frequency, it'll give you a 300 meter range. The USA frequency will actually give you a 500 meter range. So you're going to get 100 milliwatts output power from the USA, uh, USA version. So we're going to recommend that you use alkaline batteries with your remote control because some say that there is a little bit of a, a, a miscommunication using rechargeable batteries not quite high of enough voltage to, to keep the transmitter completely uh, connected to the helicopters this this might be an urban myth we're not sure but it's suggested by the factory that we use alkaline batteries so if you're looking to put double-a batteries into your transmitter make sure you pick up four double-a batteries that are that are alkaline either duracells energizers whatever is your favorite brand one of the things you want to make sure is when you turn on your transmitter that all your switches are facing away this will put you in GPS mode for when your helicopter is trying to load up and uh, record the home point so make sure that all your switches again are set to the most forward mode so let's get right into the sticks and we're going to show you what stick does what with mode 2 so on the left hand stick first up and down are going to give you elevation as well as throttle control. So left and right is going to give you your yaw. It's going to actually turn the on a horizontal basis left and right. So if you want to turn clockwise, you're going to push right on the stick and that'll turn the, the copter clockwise if you're facing uh, the rear of the helicopter is facing you. If you push left, that's going to make it go counterclockwise. Now on the right hand side of the remote, we have the right stick. So this is what the right stick does. The right stick is going to control your, your roll axis. Uh, so this will make us move to the left. And then we'll move to the right. Pushing forward on this stick will make the helicopter tilt forward and move in a forward direction as long as the rear is facing you. Pushing back on the stick will make it move backwards. Now. If the helicopter is spun around and facing you, what we call nose in, these functions are going to be reversed. So in your training, in the early development of your flying training, you want to make sure that you, you practice nose in flying. 
You want to make sure that you learn this early on so that later on when you're flying, this doesn't become uh, an obstacle in your, in your videography. So very important to learn how to fly nose in. As a beginner, when you first get this transmitter, and if you've never had a radio before, you might be wondering what this is. This is simply something for a lanyard to hook to and go around your neck while you're flying. So as a helicopter pilot, those of us who have flown in the past, it makes it really comfortable and easy to, to have something to, that lifts the transmitter up and, and holds it up for you while you worry about flying. This is the way to arm your motors on your Phantom. When you first get your Phantom turned on and you go to take your first flight, you're going to take your sticks down into the center and that's going to arm your motors and turn them on to a 15% throttle ready for takeoff. Now to turn your motors off, you're going to use the throttle stick and you're going to turn it down, push it all the way straight down for two seconds and that will disarm the motors. Now be careful that in flight while you're flying that you don't ever push down and center while the aircraft is mid-flight because it will stop the motors to zero percent and you'll drop like a rock. However, if you're, if you're descending and you're coming down and you touch the bottom of the, the edge of the travel with the stick, the throttle stick, it won't turn the motors off until you land on the ground and hold it for two seconds. Then it'll turn the motors off. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the S1 switch. Right out of the box, it's going to be set up in phantom mode. So your functionality for the S1 switch is going to be GPS mode set and is going to also be for your compass calibration. And the way you do your compass calibration before you fly, it's very important to do this. Let everything load up, take the S1 switch and down and all the way back up five times. One, two, three, four, five. And then your phantom will turn orange on the back, the lights will turn orange. You'll know that you're ready for compass calibration. We have another video that showcases this, so be sure to check that out. Now when you go into NASA M mode later and you, you uh, re recalibrate the, the system software, the firmware on your, your controller as well as your, your Phantom, you'll be able to open up NASA M mode. And NASA M mode opens up more functionality to S1. So as we open up NASA M mode, the very top point of the switch will be GPS mode, the middle point will be ADDI mode, and the bottom mode will be ADDI mode. Now, the bottom mode can be changed to return to home. If you'd like to do that when you're in NASA M mode, we can show you how to do that in the software. That's pretty easy to change that switch to return to home, but normally we like to keep it set to ADDI just so that we don't have an accident while we're sitting uh, right at the, in the pits or, or uh, near us when we're flying. When you turn everything on, you want to make sure that the switch is always facing up in GPS mode so that it records the home point of your flight. Over. The S2 switch on the left hand side of the controller, that's going to do a couple different things for you in NASA M mode. But since we're in phantom mode right now, we can use that to set a home point manually. If we take the S2 switch and we flip it from 1 to 3 position 5 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's going to set our home point as well. So if you need to reset your home point, like I said, from the 1 position to the 3 position 5 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it works when the Phantom's on the ground. Now let's talk about the S2 switch in NASA M mode. So the first position of the switch, if it's all the way out, will be off. The next switch position in the center will be course lock. So course lock is great for if you want to have an orientation, uh, a keep to a, a stick to a certain orientation along a path uh, relative to the home point. So if you look online, you can see some demonstrations of course lock and how it works. And the next switch down is going to be home lock. The third switch down is going to be home lock. So now, no matter which orientation your helicopter is facing away from the home point, if you pull back on the stick, if it's facing right or left or forwards or backwards, if you pull back to the home point, it's always going to come back to your home plate. So very important. Also in this mode, home lock only works with GPS switched on. So if you're in ADDI mode, 
home lock will not work outside of GPS mode. So please make sure you're in GPS mode when you activate home lock. So now we want to show you how to plug in your radio and hook it up to your RC assistant software. You want to plug the mini USB cable into the bottom of the remote and then the USB cable into your laptop or PC uh, desktop. So once you have that done, go ahead and switch on your transmitter to the on position. Go over to the RC Assistant software and open up RC Assistant. Once you have RC Assistant open, you'll see a few different parameters and you'll notice that if you move the sticks you'll see that we're getting some response inside the program so the channel monitors are moving around and showing us uh, the, the range extension of each stick so once you see that we can do a few things to change and calibrate our sticks so if you see that your phantom is drifting left to the right or forward or backward you can either calibrate the compass or recalibrate your sticks. So we'll show you how to do that now. Okay guys, so now we're open in the RC Assistant software. We've downloaded that to our Mac. We have a Macintosh. If you have a PC, that's okay too. Now, you'll notice right away that when you move your sticks and you have it plugged into the software that the channel monitors are showing some movement back and forth. Now, very important, first thing you want to do before you fly your copter is calibrate the sticks using the RC Assistant. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to calibrate inside the software. Now make sure that both sticks are centered, completely centered. We see they're a little off, so we'll go ahead and click next. Pick up your transmitter. Swirl your sticks. You can do them one at a time or both at a time. Make sure you touch all four corners all the way around. When you get done with the left, do the right and release the stick to the center. Once you're done, click finish and you're done with your first stick calibration. So the next step would be to unplug from the radio, plug in the, the mini USB cable into your Phantom. You're going to open up the RC, or excuse me, the Phantom Assistant software. And once you get the Phantom Assistant software open and it's plugged into your helicopter, then you turn your radio on and the Phantom on. Then you're going to see that the sticks were, are active inside the, the Phantom Assistant software. If you don't plug in the mini USB cable to the Phantom, turn the radio on and then the Phantom on, you're not going to see the sticks active. So if you try to plug in the radio directly to the Phantom Assistant software, that's not going to work. So make sure you plug in the, the mini USB cable to the Phantom. And this is for the, the Phantom Assistant software, so make sure you do that. Okay, so now we have the Phantom 2 turned on as well as the radio. And we're in the Phantom Assistant software. So the next step is to calibrate our radio using the Phantom Assistant software. So once we turn the radio on, the Phantom on, we're going to see that the sticks are now responding in the Phantom Assistant software. The channel monitors are moving backwards and forwards and giving us different numerics for left, right, up and down um, for each control stick. So the next step is to go ahead and calibrate your sticks. Okay, now we're going to do a secondary stick calibration from inside the Phantom Assistant software. So the first thing you're going to do after everything's turned on, go to the basic menu and you'll see a similar setup to what we saw in the RC Assistant software. This is going to also allow us to calibrate our sticks. Uh, this is a kind of a secondary stick calibration. So you'll see that once you have everything on that the sticks do respond in the calibration menus and it shows you variables. So the next step is to go ahead and click start. And now circle the sticks all the way to the four corners. I'm doing them both at the same time. We can do them both at once. Okay, now I'll let go back to center and click finish and you're done with your secondary stick calibration so now you should be ready to fly once you calibrate your compass and you check your upgrade menu to make sure that all your software is up to date, your firmware is up to date on your helicopter you have all the latest versions, you're ready to hit the field so thanks again for watching the Drone Camps RC YouTube channel check us out and please subscribe fly safe guys